Hey everybody, I want to talk today about VPNs or virtual private networks. Now, there are two main types of VPNs and they actually use the same technology. Now, one, you probably see ads for everywhere in like half the videos on YouTube are sponsored by VPN providers. And that's basically where you uh, hide your traffic or protect your privacy by uh, making sure that all your traffic goes somewhere other than from your location, right? You can use this for uh, like watching streaming things in a different location, uh, or you can just hide your, your traffic from your ISP or anybody like that. The other way that VPNs are used are like if you're a remote worker and you VPN into your uh, headquarters office so that you can access things that are inside the business or inside the office, inside the local network where your company is uh, without being there physically, right? It's like a tunnel into that thing. So that's the two main ways that VPNs are used. And here's the cool thing, SSH can actually function as a VPN, sort of. Uh, and because the technology is the same, whether you're trying to like just reroute your traffic and hide where you're coming from or that sort of thing, or you need to get into a, a network to be able to access things, uh, because it's the same technology, SSH can be used for both things. Now I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can use SSH to VPN or get into somewhere else. The first way is not really a VPN. It's called, it's a proxy. We're going to use a proxy. Uh, specifically, we're going to use a SOX proxy, which just sounds cool. It just means like socket secure. It does not encrypt anything. It's important to know that, uh, but you can just use SSH to, um, create a proxy on a remote server. So you have to have access to a remote SSH server from where you are. And with a SOX proxy, this can be, you can do this from a Windows machine or a Mac or a Linux machine. And as long as you can establish an SSH connection to a remote server, you can use that remote server as a proxy. So let's do that first and I'll show you what that will provide for you. All right, so first things first, we're here on the command line and we're just going to establish an SSH connection on a remote client. Now, first of all, I should say I have, um, I'm here in Northern Michigan and I have a server that resides in Austria, right? I have the country Austria. I actually have a server there. It's a co-located server. So we're going to SSH into there. So it's clear that our traffic is going somewhere else. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is SSH into uh, that remote server and we're going to do it in a way that establishes a SOX proxy for our local computer. So let me show you. First of all, uh, we're going to, oh, first of all, before we do that, let me show you where I am now. So I'm gonna open up a web browser. Uh, here I just have uh, Firefox open and we are going to click on this link, what is my IP address? And it should show that we are currently in uh, Petoskey, which is where I live here in Northern Michigan, sure enough. So Petoskey, Michigan is where we're currently located and now we're going to establish that connection. So SSH dash capital D, this is how you set up a SOX proxy. And the SOX proxy port is generally 1080. So I remember that like 1080p, like the video resolution, but it's kind of a loosey goosey sort of standard. You can use any port you want. If it's port 1024 or above, you have to have root access to do that because zero to 1023 are privileged ports, uh, but you can use any port you want, but 1080 is the loosey goosey default. So we're gonna use the default, if you will. So dash D 1080 to set up a, proc a SOX proxy on port 1080. And then all we do is uh, connect to that remote server. So as powers at kermit.brainofshawn.com. And that is going to connect us. Now we could do a couple things we could, um, just do dash n which means like it doesn't actually log in it would just like wait there until we hit control c but right now we're logged in via ssh and we since we did that dash d 1080 if we go back to a web browser here and we go into the settings and i don't know where it is here in firefox so let's just look for ooh, i got a spell it right proxy settings here we go so click on proxy settings uh, this is probably what it's going to be like default on your system. But if we do manual proxy configuration and the SOX host is going to be 127.0.0.1 because we're doing it from our local computer here. And then the port that we chose was port 1080. Uh, and then SOX version five is fine, the default there. So click OK. Now, if we open up a new tab and we go to what is my IP address, it should, as long as I did everything correct, 
Ha ha. Now, look at that. Now we are in Austria, according to the web browser. So that's actually just a really cool thing you can do. And you can use that to get into like a remote network. If you want to access it, the proxy allows you to, um, to go as if you were sitting in that com in that data center in Austria, as if your browser were right there. So all traffic is going to go through there, but a Sox proxy is only for the web browser that you set up to use it. So if we come back over here and we have another tab open here, uh, if we were to do just curl, um, HTTPS colon slash slash, I can has IP. I think that's what it is. I can has IP, um, dot com. Yeah. So this is still the Petoskey IP address. This is the one here in Michigan that does not show us Austria because it only proxies for the browser. And even then it only does that if we set it up to do that, because even though we're connected, if we were to go back into here and go back to our proxy settings, go back to no proxy or auto detect, even though we're still connected, if we come back here and refresh, we're back in Michigan, because again, it only uses the proxy if we tell it to, and other applications on the system are not going to be able to uh, utilize that unless we can specifically tell it to use a SOX proxy and it's designed to do that, etc. So there is a way, there's a tool that allows us to do even more. And it's really a, a, a nifty tool. It's called Shuttle SSH. Shuttle, well, shuttle, I guess. I don't know how you say it, uh, but it's a really nifty tool because what it does, it uses an SSH uh, tunnel and it actually sets up routing on your local system. Now, this one does not work in Windows. This requires OS 10 or I've only ever really done it in Linux, to be honest, uh, but you actually set it up with a... Uh, um, it uses SSH. You have to have SSH access on a remote server. And there are a couple gotchas. You don't have to have root access remotely, but on your local computer, you have to have sudo or root access on your system because it changes the routing table on your local machine. But you only have to have a user level account on the remote SSH server. The remote SSH server also has to have Python version 2.3 or later. So pretty much any version of Python uh, that's been around for the past decade or whatever. Uh, and uh, let's see anything else. Oh, uh, it does a lot more than we're gonna do. You can actually reroute all your DNS things so that it all goes through this shuttle tunnel. Uh, but we're just gonna do the most basic version of it. And it is a little finicky. So I wanna show you what I mean by that. So let's go back and we'll set up a shuttle tunnel that will route all of our traffic, not just uh, stuff that we set up with the proxy. All right, I'm back here. I'm going to exit out of my connection uh, to Kermit. So we're gonna clear the screen. And now shuttle is a program. It should be available in your in your repo for whatever distribution you're using. But here's how you do it. You say, uh, you don't have to do this as root. It'll actually prompt you for pseudo access uh, when you do it. So just type, shuttle now notice it's shuttle with two s's at the beginning so ssh shuttle it's very cleverly named uh, and then you do dash r for the remote host and i'm going to do s powers at kermit.brainofshawn.com now here's one of the gotchas it's very finicky about how you connect to the remote host. You can't just use the name Kermit. Even though Kermit resolves for me, if I didn't put the fully qualified domain name, uh, I have to put the fully qualified domain name or it will fail. You can also do the IP address. If you know the remote IP address, you can do that as well. Uh, but just using the fully qualified domain name seems to be enough, okay? So anyway, shuttle-r for remote host, the host that we're gonna connect to, uh, and then what networks we want it to route. I want it to route everything. So I'm just going to do zero uh, slash zero. This is like saying 0, .0, 0, .0, 0, 0.0.0.0 forward slash zero, meaning everything, right? All the subnets, everything I want routed through the remote host. So zero slash zero is a really easy way of saying that. And then here's the other gotcha. You have to do dash X for exclude and put the same fully qualified domain name or IP address. So Kermit.brainofshawn.com. And what that does is it says, I want you to route everything, but I want you to exclude the host itself because otherwise it's like, you know, you, you have to connect to it. And if it's going through the service that you haven't set up anyway, you just have to exclude the remote host that you're connecting to. So if you do that, it is, um, should just connect. So let's do that. It'll probably prompt me. Yep. Local pseudo password. So this is my local, uh, user account. And I'm going to put in my password. 
All right, so then it connects. Now, if you get a message right away that says uh, broken pipe disconnected, that happens a lot. And that's one of the things that um, uh, sometimes using the IP address will work if the fully qualified don domain name doesn't work. Sometimes just trying it over and over works. I don't know, Shuttle has been weird the last couple of times I've used it. But anyway, once it's connected like this, now if we go back over to our window here where we curled, so this is not using any proxy setup. But if we do this, check this out. Boom, all of a sudden we get the Austrian IP address, even though we haven't set up any sort of a proxy. So now if we go back over here, remember we turned off the proxy settings, but if we go, what is my IP address? It should say, boom, Austria again. We are going through Austria, even though we did not set up our proxy. In fact, I can show you if we go to settings and we search for proxy. Da -da -da. No proxy at all. It's using the routing table on our local computer through that thing. Now, again, sometimes you get this weird thing where it says like loop disconnect error and you just have to try over and over a couple times. Eventually it should connect. Once it connects, uh, you should be good for as long as you need to use the connection. And again, it's not just for a browser, it's for anything on your system because it changes the routing table. And it's actually really efficient because it doesn't do TCP over TCP, which is uh, kind of a way that you can tunnel stuff through SSH, uh, but it makes things really, really slow. It doesn't do that. It actually routes packets. It's actually really, really cool. Uh, if you have root access and you do a lot of other preliminary setups, you can actually even route um, UDP traffic through the shuttle connection. But in general, I just make a quick connection if I want to access that remote network uh, that I am SSHing into. Anyway, SSH is a super powerful tool and you can do an ad hoc poor man's VPN using nothing more than SSH or the shuttle program, which is free and you can download as well. Anyway, remember to learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. See you in the next video.